Hey, welcome back, I'm Lei. SpaceX has been making strides in the past decade, outperforming its competitors and dominating the commercial launch market. Its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are the most trusted launchers in the world right now. Its upcoming Super Heavy lift launcher, the Big Falcon Rocket, is also the center of discussion on multiple videos on this channel. So, no doubt, SpaceX is a true innovator in the space industry, making one bold move after another, trying its best to achieve its goals. However, there is one bit of a technology that is supposedly better, but gets seldomly mentioned the nuclear propulsion technology. So, today, let's dive deeper into the idea of nuclear thermal rockets and whether SpaceX should build one after the Big Falcon rocket. First of all, the fundamental principles behind nuclear thermal rockets and the normal rocket is the same. They both use reaction engines that produce thrust by expelling reaction mass in accordance with Newton's third law of motion. In a normal rocket, it burns internally stored fuel and liquid oxygen to form a jet stream that pushes rocket forward. A nuclear-powered rocket, on the other hand, heats up hydrogen gas to a high temperature and uses hydrogen jet stream to propel rockets. However, precisely because of the different gases expelled, the specific impulse of these two types of engines are hugely different. You see, hydrogen is the lightest element we know. Therefore, it's much lighter than water vapor and carbon composite expelled by normal rockets. As a result, nuclear rockets have a specific impulse that doubles that of a normal rocket. Putting it into perspective, this means nuclear rocket can burn for a much longer time with the same amount of fuel and hence reaching its destination faster. This does not make a difference to low Earth orbit launches, but it does come in handy when we're talking about interplanetary travels between Earth and Mars. It would be really nice if we can cut the travel time to Mars from 6 months to 2 months. Furthermore, we already have experience building nuclear power rockets. Starting in the late 1950s, nuclear thermal engines have always been a leading contender in building next generation rockets. In fact, the program that made nuclear engines, NERVA, was largely considered successful and its engines were thoroughly tested and were ready to be built into rockets. The famous Saturn V nearly used a nuclear thermal engine for its third stage, the stage that took Neil Armstrong to the moon. This is how close we were to building nuclear thermal rockets. Other similar projects include Project Rover and Project Timberwind. Both of them verify the safety and capability of a nuclear thermal rocket, especially its superior capability in low gravity, deep space situation. Project Timberwind had proven to have achieved a specific impulse of over a thousand seconds, where the same number for SpaceX Merlin 1D is 311 seconds. Furthermore, the scientists at NASA were also very clever to use nuclear engines only on the upper stage of a rocket to ensure that during the unlikely event of an explosion, a nuclear reactor is less likely to be affected. Moreover, igniting nuclear engines only in space will also make sure if the engine malfunctions, its nuclear waste will not fall back to Earth. Well, then the question comes, if nuclear-powered rockets are better, somewhat safe, and at the same time, we have the capability to build it? Why haven't we? Well, the answer is politics and a general loss of interest after the Apollo period. At that time, both the United States and the USSR are trying to match each other's capability. Hence, when it was clear that America had won the space race, there was no more incentive to build better and more capable rockets. And that's why nuclear-powered rocket engines were shelved and the Apollo program was ended. Going back to the main question of today, should SpaceX build nuclear thermal rockets after BFR now that we know the benefits of its technology? Well, my two cents is this. Although nuclear thermal technology for rocketry is interesting and super exciting, I don't think SpaceX should build nuclear thermal rockets because it's contradictory to the core idea of rapid reusability. Well, let me explain. You see, SpaceX wants to land rockets again and again while nuclear rockets do not work well on Earth because of its low thrust to weight ratio. Therefore, it wouldn't be financially beneficial for SpaceX to succeed BFR with the nuclear thermal rockets. However, this does not mean we should eliminate the possibility of nuclear thermal rockets altogether. For example, the idea of nuclear space tug was proposed in 1969 to be the next generation space transportation. 
The basic idea of the plan was that we will have a nuclear space tug coasted in low Earth orbit. And once a Mars module enters low Earth orbit, it will get assembled with the nuclear propulsion space tug. And then, with the help of the nuclear propulsion, astronauts will reach Mars much faster. Nuclear space tug will then return to low Earth coasting orbit, awaits the next mission. This concept could potentially be adopted by BFR to take advantage of the high specific impulse of nuclear propulsion in space while achieving rapid reusability on Earth. Most importantly, with the nuclear space tug, our astronauts could reach Mars much faster and hence endure less radiation during the journey. In practice, NASA has also hired BWXT Nuclear Energy Inc. in 2017 to advance the existing nuclear propulsion technology. NASA here recognizes the unique benefits of nuclear propulsion technology for deep space missions to Mars and says this in its statement. As we push into the solar system, nuclear propulsion may offer the only truly viable technology option to extend human reach to the surface of Mars and to worlds beyond. We're excited to working on technologies that could open up deep space for human exploration. NASA clearly has a lot of hopes for nuclear thermal rockets. Therefore, SpaceX could let NASA test the technology first and choose whether or not to adopt nuclear thermal propulsion after seeing the viability of it. Well, the bottom line is this. When a company is building a project of such a grand scale, it has to keep an open mind and explore different opportunities while tackling problems one at a time. Could nuclear thermal rockets help humans trips to Mars? Absolutely. But the possibility is still very far from implementation and SpaceX out to focus on what matters most, which is building the Big Falcon rocket leaving conversations like this to channels like mine, and I'd be happy to talk about them more in the future. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, leave a comment down below if you agree with my assessment on nuclear thermal rockets in relation to SpaceX. Uh, as always, I made a poll a while ago asking you guys if you think nuclear thermal rockets is a possibility for SpaceX, and I'd like to highlight a few comments of yours. CDR says, they should double down on BFR and not divert major resources elsewhere. Max says, nuclear powered rockets are only useful for travel and propulsion in a vacuum, so the reusability focused mindsets of SpaceX does not align with them. While I agree with them, there are many more very interesting and insightful comments in the community section of this channel, so be sure to check them out after finish watching this video. Also, I want to thank these guys for supporting me on Patreon. I, en I encourage you guys to do the same if you uh, like videos here on Curious Elephant. All right, thank you all so much for watching. As always, I'm Lai. I'll catch you guys later.